Special events applications, Leisha. Good evening, Mayor and Council. The first application is from um, Main Street Farmers. They would like to do their market. We actually started on May 27th and will run through um, October 28th in Fireman's Park. Next is VNA seeking to do a summer safety car seat, car seat insulation at Springwood Park on June 29th. Asbury Park Family Day at the Beach would like to do their surfing event on um, Saturday, August the 5th. A day of worship um, is seeking to do a Christian music festival in Sunset Park on September 2nd. And lastly, there's a wedding on um, August 20th on Fifth Avenue Beach at 630. Any questions? Yes. Mm -hmm. I have a question about the day of worship. Yes. Uh, Labor Day weekend, right? Yes. So there will not be any street closings, correct? Um, they are not requesting any street closings at this time. They applied to have it in Bradley Park, and we said absolutely not. And okay. And suggested if you want to have it that weekend because of either commitments to artists or advertising, the only place it's possible is Sunset Park. Okay. Just because the beach runs just too crowded. And so there won't be any street closings on that weekend? The only, they didn't ask for it. I think the numbers they first presented were a lot larger. He's dropped his numbers Correct. down. Right. The only street closing would be, if need be, Bond Street between right. Fifth and Sunset. Okay. That would yeah. be the All only right. street closing. Right. Okay. And he hasn't requested mm -hmm. that yet. No, not yet. No. Okay, great. Okay. Alicia, is there still going to be. Um, an affair at the park on Fifth Avenue or Sunset Avenue? Uh, when? The, uh, the 27th of June. The, I'm sorry? The 27th of this Tw month. 27th? I think it's an, an Do you uh, know the name of the event? <coughs> I think Mr. Ross was at, Mr. Ross That is to be to determined at this point. Oh, that's what I wanted mm -hmm. to be at. okay. Thank you. Thank you. We'll move on to presentations. We have a presentation uh, re for requested uh, plan amendment for 512 Summerfield Avenue. Andrew Karras from the firm Fox Rothschild, on behalf of Shared Equities Company, LLC. What we're here for tonight is initial presentation with regard to a plan amendment with regard to property give a little background and then I'll have two witnesses testify. Property's at 512 Summerfield Avenue, it's block 3101, lot three. Presently it's existing as parking lot, it's a vacant parking lot, vacant lot. What we're proposing is a 12 unit multifamily residential dwelling. It is located in a CBD mixed use zone. <coughs> What's unique about this particular property and the reason that we're asking for the plan amendment is that when you look down the street, it's kind of a split street. On one side, you have the CBD, and across the street, you have the residential zone. When you go through the entire street, the entire streetscape, you see it's the R1 zone on the other side. It's mostly residential. And the CBD, though, is not allowed for ground to use residential. What we are proposing is to put apartments on the ground floor for this particular property. That being said, I'm going to call. Mr. Garbala to testify, he's been here before, testified before in front of the planning boards and the zoning boards and developed what we're seeing already with that zoning board. Is that a good way to do it? Certainly. Good evening, Jose Cabrera, the architect for the project. Uh, this is a parking lot that is in uh, 30 by 100 piece of property. Uh, it runs on um, solar field, and what we're planning on putting on it is a story building, uh, three levels of units, uh, with the top floor being a duplex uh, level. Uh, we have four units, four studios, four studios, and four two-bedroom units on the top. Wait, so, uh, I'm sorry, one, slow down, and two, can you go through the, the bedrooms again? It's studio, studio, one bedroom. The, 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 uh, the four units, and maybe we should go to a plan just to show you that. This is the basement plan. <coughs> Okay. Uh, we don't have any bedrooms on the first 
floor. Uh, they are duplex units that go down into the lower level with a recreation area. Uh, most of the lower level is utilities and you know other building uses, uh, obviously necessary to a, to run a building. Uh, the second floor has again one, two, three, four more units, uh, and these are all studio units. There are no windows on the side, just windows in the front and back. The, and, and that's the eight studio units that I just mentioned. The uh, <coughs> third floor has again one, two, three, four units. These units are duplexes having a dining and uh, you know more open areas in the first floor, and then two bedrooms uh, on the second floor. And, and that's what constitutes the, uh, the project. And so what's the square footage for the studio? Studios. The studio units vary from uh, seven. From almost 800 square feet, I'm sorry, from 600 to uh, about 1,100 square feet. Okay. Now you're familiar with the area. You did a, an examination. You haven't been uh, preparing your plans and designs of these buildings, am I correct? Yeah, that is correct. What we're proposing is residential units on the ground floor, am I correct? That, that is correct. And that is not permitted in the CDB zone. That correct? is also correct. And that's the reason that we're requesting a plan of that, correct? That is right. Looking at the entire streetscape and the entire area, for the units? No, no, this is parking for the utility company that's next door to it. Okay, and what about parking for the units? Uh, we're now proposing parking for the building at this point. We would be paying into the fund as permitted by statute um, for the, the particular property. If we were to put commercial on the bottom, would it be, in a sense, a more intense use? We could put commercial there, do the same type of building, put commercial on the bottom, also have no parking, but it would actually be residential which would be less intensive use which would, would require essentially less parking to utilize the site. Keep in mind though that um, that site is going to be filled up this building. I just it, want to say we're going to provide parking <coughs> either through the fund or off site or on the other side. Which, which brings up the other issue which Mr. Sapi can address in terms of parking off site. Okay. Yeah so uh, my, our goal is is to as, as discussed with the city in the past is to provide a parking facility at 607 Madison, a multi-level parking um, facility. Uh, we've explored that. We've had a design. We presented it. I think it's with the city's consultants right now. Uh, we're looking for feedback on that presently. That's a design for upwards of 640 spaces in the central business district, which is approximately about a block away from the site. We're looking to move, obviously, that project. Um, if we can get Are you talking about the food shop, the food store site that you were, that you proposed? 607 Madison is adjacent to the Asbury Park Press building. Yeah, right. But you is it the one that has the food store? It had. We, we had. Well, in the concept plan, we had proposed a grocer on the ground floor. Okay. And so now you're saying you're going to have parking there for this. Well, I'm saying I'll have ample parking for a lot of sites in the central business district. I hit 640, and that design, that concept design, included above the proposed grocer a 
transfer deck with an automated parking system. And that would include parking for public use also? That's my goal, is that I'll have, certainly I'll have excess parking for the sites that I'm looking to develop in the Central Business District, and this would also help with the demand, the excess demand that we're experiencing in the district today. So is that 607? Mm -hmm. 607 Madison. And that plan is still alive? I think it's with your consultant right now. I, I'm waiting to hear back from your consultant, the city's consultant. Who's our consultant? W. You would ask the oh. W to review the pro forma. I have a call with him tomorrow afternoon. Do what? <laughs> you ask NW to review their pro forma, make sure the math works, and I have a call with NW tomorrow. Do what you know about I thought we fired SW. I'm sorry. I wonder we're all confused. <laughs> I'd be like, oh, okay, thank you. There's some additional information they had requested of us, so we have been going back and forth with information which they do have. Okay, thank you. Thank you. Sorry. <laughs> Listen, there, there's no question that parking is a huge issue here in the city, especially in the downtown. Um, that 607 addresses a lot of concerns for us for a lot of parking um, if we get that going, going again. So look, just my two cents. I like the flow of retail, right? So I like how um, you have Purple Glaze, you have the tattoo shop, then you, you, you go into the hair salon or the nail place, you go down the corner to the bank. Um, my preference is, is to, to keep at least that side of the street as much retail as we can. I get what you're saying about the intents. I totally understand what you're saying about the parking. Um, but you know, my position is just maintaining a vibrant downtown retail um, helps us. I just, you know, um, I would just say also, not, not in addition to the parking, so it's a less of an impact on parking, I would just say as a, as a, a landlord in the district that certainly retail I would say it's, it's on a proportionate basis. It's what we have in the in the city. It's it's a little tougher to fill. Uh, to it's fill a tougher the space. economic okay. struggle to, to fit retail in some of the, the outlying areas, let alone you know here. But even the main thoroughfares I would consider like Bangs Avenue and Crooklyn to be a higher demand corridor. traffic I, I would say I mean uh, let's I mean listen the downtown is kind of identified itself as anchored by a lot of the restaurants that are there um, there's more immediate traffic centered around those this is kind of like on the perimeter it doesn't get the visibility that, that a lot of the other you know airline corridors like bangs and, and, um, and Crooklyn receive and Lake for that matter too quite a lot but let's move also a lot going on in Lake um, in addition see the car traffic going up and down. Um, there, there's limited car traffic, so you don't, you know, for a retail store in that particular location, it's a tough place because you're not having, number one, people walking by and not, not a lot of people driving by to see those stores at that and then to uh, reduce those, uh, any retail on that particular <coughs> street. It's a tough street to retail. Thank you. Right, so by way of process, if the council is interested in pursuing this, you would have to pass a resolution to send this over to the planning board because, as Mr. Karras indicated, it would involve a plan amendment to the CBD. And to that put would residential go on the first floor, right? Just so yes, to put the residential on the first floor okay. because right now that's not permitted in the CBD. And then planning board would provide their review and comments and you would potentially move forward with an ordinance to amend the CBD plan. Thank you very much. Next uh, item on the agen uh, agenda, which was for 700 Bangs Avenue, will be rescheduled. 
Um, now we're up to review of agenda items for this evening's meeting. Excuse me. Resolution 2017-186 is a special events application. Resolution 187 is a resolution making application to the local finance board um, as a qualified um, Bond Act municipality as we receive transitional aid. Anytime we offer any sort of debt or capital ordinances, the local finance board in Trenton has to uh, um, sign off on it. Tonight there's for proposed three ordinances for introduction involving debt. This authorizes us to go before the local finance board. Resolutions 188 and 194 is a, dip, a disposition of surplus property. 188 is items that we are going to try to auction off, mostly vehicles. And 194 is um, getting rid of throwing out property that has no value. These are broken printers, broken monitors, um, old computers that don't work, old phones that don't work, um, and have no, no value work. To them. Resolution 190 is a standard resolution that's done every year authorizing the tonnage grant. They're always a year behind, so don't worry about the 2016 date. 192 is releasing a performance bond uh, for 205 and 209 Main Street. Again, as you've seen, these have become standard as we move along with redevelopment projects. Moving on to individual resolutions, 196 is amending the temporary budget appropriations for 2017. Um, we are at the end of the second quarter for June, so now it's an amendment of the temporary budget going over the 26.25% that's authorized under the fiscal affairs law. 197 is payment of bills. Um, 198 is Can liquor license. Can we go back a second? Sure. Yeah. I'm sorry. Oh, I, I skipped one. Go ahead. 191, the 192, the 193, which I talked to you about. And 191 has been removed. If you look in your new agenda, it has been removed. And 193 has been removed because it was a duplicate, same as 192. <coughs> Why was 191 removed? Because it was not ready to be released yet. There's an outstanding bill. So we're not going to let the bond be released until everyone pays. Okay, for. and so I'll ask the question so I don't have to ask them next time, and maybe it applies to the one that wasn't removed. As much as the engineer is saying they've completed everything, does that include paying into the parking fund? Yes, one applicant that's been removed, and I'll, I'll get the exact one, did not have to pay, and then one, the one that did has paid into the bond. Thank you. You're welcome. Um, 195, I skipped by accident, sorry about that, is re rejecting the request for the proposals for the Turf Club Soil Removal Project. Um, this is yeah. the application, this is the project that GEP will fund us at 75% as part of Interface um, Turf Club Project. The bids have to be rejected because the consultant quite honestly screwed up and put them due after a holiday, which violates state law. So we're going out to bid uh, again, but we have to reject them for a violation of the law. <coughs> um, 199 establishes the members of the Weyer, Mayor's Wellness Committee, um, which the members will be read during the regular meeting. Resolution 200 is appointing a member to the Housing Authority, which the member will be read during the regular meeting. Resolution 201 is terminating the contract with Municap for Financial Advising Services. Uh, they're the ones that are currently doing the billing associated with iStar projects. Resolution 202 is the purchase of a four-wheel vehicle for the police department. This is so that they can have a better presence on the beach and respond to emergencies faster. Uh, resolution 203 authorizes an agreement for financial and administrative services, which is the company, Lurch, Vinci, and Higgins, to replace Municap. Um, Myself, Mr. Shripka, Mr. Laventhal, Mr. Perlman from ISAR, who's their bond attorney, um, representatives from McMenamin in Scotland, Acacia, and Bond Council have all been involved in this process and we're all recommending the termination of Municap's contract and the hiring of Lurch, Vincent, and Higgins to provide these services. 
Um, resolution 204 is design services and proje project management and construction management for, um, that really should be for sanitary sewer and um, the road program for Peck Street. Um, the city has received a 237,000 DOT grant for the repaving and reconstruction of Peck Street, which is later is an introduced ordinance. Um, resolution 205 <coughs> for TNM to prepare the municipal access plan for the city of Asbury Park. The public access plan, um, or the PAP as you'll hear it commonly referred to, is a requirement for the DEP for cleaning the beach. Um, we've been auditing our permits with DEP. DEP has been doing this across New Jersey, um, and it is found that we actually don't have the individual permit to do maintenance on the beach, um, cleaning, raking, um, planting grass. We don't have that permit. Um, the last record DEP has was it looks like eight or nine years ago. It was, a, it was um, in the city's possession. This corrects it. This plan is gonna cost approximately $23,000 to do. If we do it, then the plan, the permit is an individual permit under DEP rules, and it's $1,000. If we don't do this plan every year, it's a $30,000 CAFR permit. So obviously, it's much more cost effective to do this. It's done once, we're done. Um, it needs to be added as an element to the master plan. So we're recommending that you, the council approve this tonight, and then tomorrow I'll reach out to the planning board and say, um, we need three members to be on a little subcommittee um, I'm going to take the lead on this. TNM thinks that we'll have this done pretty quickly, but it is, it's labor intensive, but it needs to get done in order to save us a lot of money over the long run. Um, resolution 206 is an execution of a right of way use agreement between the city of Asbury Park and Verizon. Um, Verizon has come to us and one other municipality to provide free Wi Fi services in a pilot program. Um, they are proposing free Wi Fi along the Springwood Avenue corridor up to Kula Cafe and the Central Business District. Um, there is no cost to the city. They're going to be putting um, wireless access points, Wi-Fi access points on various poles. Um, the map isn't finalized yet. They're hopeful to have this done sooner than later, but this will be free Wi-Fi for any visitors along Springwood Avenue corridor and the Central Business District. I think it's really exciting. It, it more than really exciting, and it just happened very quickly. Mm -hmm. Thurs Thursday or Friday. That's Thursday or Friday, and they want to start right away, and they want to get it done right away, and they didn't want a lot of advertisement about it, because, but it, it, it is a part of the program. Mm -hmm. uh, they wanted to do our beach run. Our beach run was already done, so they said, how about downtown? And they stopped on the other side of the railroad tracks, and we said, how about extending it to Springwood Avenue Park? And they said, no problem. So it was a great meeting, and they didn't have to do that, but they did do that, and they understood why. So it, it reaches to the park for all the concerts, and it reaches to the new buildings, be it Michaels and everything. Uh, thank you, Verizon. It is outstanding. And when will this be installed? How, how long before? They, they gave us a date, but their date is probably not realistic due to JCPNL and some electrical issues. So I don't want to say publicly because okay. it, it can change. They've met with JCPNL. Um, they drove around the city with our electrician, Manny and Public Works. Um, we've already had the discussions with George Sela for the electrical permits. We're doing this as fast as we can, but it's just, they have the equipment, they're ready to go. Their fiber lines were already there. It's just getting some additional approvals. So is it possible it might be up and running by the time the concerts um, begin? When do the concerts start? Uh, probably not the, 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 no. probably no. not the beginning not the concerts, one. but by the middle or end. Okay. They, they have an ambitious date. They want it up and running as quick as possible. The only thing that's going to slow them down south of the city is going to be... It's going to be JCPNL. JCPNL. Okay. And we reached out to JCPNL and Jim Markey. He's on vacation, but they're aware of it. Mm -hmm. Right. To make this happen as quick as possible. Great. Moving on to in ordinances for introduction. Number 25 is a, a business licenses, um, sale of animals. This bans the 
what's becoming popular, puppy mills. Um, 26 is amending traffic and parking regulations. 27 is vacating an unnamed alley on Dunluwe Street. 28, 29, and 30, I would actually like to get into a little bit more discussion. 28 is um, for new parking meters. 29 is sewer utility improvements, um, which is just sewer relining and televising and reconstruction is needed. And 30 is for the reconstruction, both sewer and road for Heck Street. Um, these are the ones that previously have been mentioned about the local finance board. Um, the process, as you all know, is introduced tonight, local finance board in July, um, and then I come back with approvals from local finance board and we can adopt it that night. Um, those are those three ordinances. For second reading public hearing is ordinance 2722, which if you recall, we tabled at the last meeting because we were looking into some auditing aspects of it. This ordinance was from 2009, which bonded for 15.9 million, 15.8 million for improvements along the Springwood Avenue corridor. Um, that project is pretty much done outside of what's been authorized already for increasing the line underneath the railroad tracks at Memorial um, from 24 to 18 to 24 inches. That project we're hopeful to have out to bid shortly, probably by August, um, and construction starting September, October-ish. This, if there's any money left over, this change will actually allow us to do projects anywhere else in the city. But Spring, this is the last part of Springwood Avenue. We just want to have it just in case um, we can use it. And then 24, again, amends the traffic regulations um, for the city. Any questions? Just one thing. 28, 29, <coughs> and 30 are bond ordinances. When anybody says bond ordinances, and people do realize, and we're borrowing more money, we're going to raise how much we owe. Now, talking to you, we have some bonds coming off this year where these should replace them, and it'll be no tax increase. Uh, I wouldn't say no tax increase until we do all the final refunding, but we've been very careful with our debt authorizations issued and unfunded and issued and funded. Um, so our debt ratio has gone down over the last couple of years as we've been paying it off. Our principal and interest mm -hmm. in the budget has gone down. We've done very good with that. There will, there will be something. It might be very small or zero, um, which is still something, but we'll have all that financial data you know, as the audit finishes and we go for the local Right, but I just want the public to know that as much as we're adding bonds, some old ones are coming off every year. So we actually just do refinanced um, about 14, 14 million, and our interest rate was 1.65, which is about three tenths of a point less than what a lot of other places were getting. So we're, our indebtedness is in very, very good shape. And then Cindy, yours on 198. Liquor licenses. Mm -hmm. That question I asked you on page <coughs> about the cameo. Are they still? No, you're right. I moved them up. Yeah, I, I that yeah. Page. If you on the revised uh, resolution, I moved them up to the regular group. So. <laughs> you were know, right. I don't have a revised. I have it, but it's, it's somewhere here. But you were right. Okay, thank Their you. Their pocket. And yeah. for ordinance 24, we're recommending that you um, vote no on this, so we can make a substantial change to Heck Street. Um, we want to reverse, um, from listening to some of the residents, the way the one way reads. So staff is recommending, and as you guys have talked to, some of the residents in the area to actually vote this down, and we'll redo the ordinance for the next meeting. So Michael, that, okay, go ahead. I'm no, you go ahead. So if anybody was here, and I'm going to make that announcement, we did get a petition against uh, Heg Street going one way north to south, and we talked to it about it amongst ourselves and amongst the professionals. So the best way and the only way, because it's a substantial change, we cannot just change it. So we're going to vote no on it and then reintroduce it next week as far as what the residents are requesting. So if anybody's here tonight to speak upon this, you can go home. And if not, you can speak on it if you want to, but it's going to be voted down and we're going to listen to the people that submitted the petition. 
Thank you. Go ahead. I have a question on the same um, same ordinance. So the one-way streets that are identified are they already one-way streets? Yes, you're amending. So we're not no. we're yeah. not adding any no. more no. one-way streets. Just Thank the goodness. One. Heck. Okay. All right. Uh, we'll move on to matters by City Council. So I just have um, a couple announcements. We are going to uh, form a budget committee, and anyone who might be interested in applying to be on that committee um, can fill out one of the volunteer applications that we have online. And um, I don't know if you've all seen the beautiful Sunset Avenue footbridge, but there will be a ribbon cutting for that on Friday. June 23rd at 4 o'clock on the 5th Avenue side. And also there will be um, a public input meeting for the city's master plan on the 20th at 7 o'clock in at the Senior Center. Six? No, not Springwood what? Avenue, here. It's here. here. Oh. Here. Sorry, it's not at Springwood Avenue. It's here in Council Chambers. Uh, and that's it. Um, <coughs> on Friday night, there will be another expungement session at St. Stephen's Church. So anyone who is interested, can please come. Um, on, oh, on the 28th of June, there will be a job fair sponsored by Michaels, and Michaels will be, be constructing the new Renaissance projects on Springwood Avenue. It will be held, we think, here on the, in the morning, but something will be on the city's website giving you specific information as to what time and exactly where it will be held. And Michael, I have a question. Um, Springwood Avenue Park, is the fountain on and ready for the summer? Uh, down to Earth is checking on that. I talked to the project engineer for, from Suburban yesterday, or Tuesday, yesterday, Tuesday. Um, they're checking to make sure everything is still proper. They didn't know that park hasn't been turned over to us. It hasn't been down to Earth. It's still above there every day. So we've been, we're just trying to get all down to Earth to come and do the inspections before everything gets on top. So uh, they will be, they'll try to have it on before the first concert? Trying to. When is the first concert again? First concert is uh, Gary U.S. Bonds on Monday, June 26th. Okay, and Little Lazar. No? No, he's not on that one. He's okay. on another one, okay. but not on that <laughs> one. The schedule should be up on the um, website of the Asbury Park Music Foundation. This is me. Um, I'm concerned about the mayor's ball. Do we have a mayor's ball? Are we still going to have one? I was invited to Neptune. I'm saying, wait a minute, I have a mayor right here. Why don't I go to that one? So is there a committee or so? Because this mayor said I'm not wearing a tuxedo, so we have the rodeo. Well, where, you, where would you normally wear? Which I think you deserve one. No, well, <laughs> I'd rather have the rodeo for recreation. It was think everybody liked it because you didn't have to wear a tuxedo. I, I think everybody had a great t time and we decided not to do it every year because there's so many other people raising money that you can't keep on going to the well every year. So we made enough last year to last two years. So save a date in April of 2018, there'll be another rodeo for recreation and instead of a mayor's ball. Very good. Okay. This morning, I had the privilege of going to uh, Hope Academy, and they had a talent show. So I just want to give a big shout out to them. Uh, the kids were just beautiful. Uh, they did a nice job, and they felt so proud getting up on stage. And um, they have their graduation this coming Friday, and I wish them all well. Uh, I want to talk about recreation a little bit, the committee. Uh, some of the things that we're coming up with and we're still in the process of doing is uh, it came up that we want li to like to have a walking club. Uh, what is that is uh, we're going to have volunteers that walk every morning and if you need a walking partner that part you will call that partner or call one of the people that's in 
charge of the walking club and they will drive their car over and walk with you around the block or as far as you want to go. Uh, there's also a recreation sign up. You can call Alicia Floyd with, to that. Um, we also thought about uh, a self-defense class just for females, 8 to 80. And we're going to have a presentation eventually. And this instructor, he's well known. He's from Asbury Park. And, and there will be a sign up for that. And there will be a lot of uh, two demonstrations before uh, you have the opportunity to sign up. I just want to talk personally for a minute. <clears throat> uh, the reason I want to talk personally is because I, I don't believe that some people know uh, my history and they keep calling me and asking me various questions about why I'm always in the face, somebody's face, talking to them. Well, I explain it to them and the majority of people that they talk about is police officers that in uniform and out of uniform. And the way I went about explaining this is I taught, in the, I taught in one, two, three, four school districts. I also coach for 20, 28 years with various sports. I taught for 28 years, and I coached for 28 years. And I got to know a lot of people from the Monmouth County and Ocean area. And one of the things I used to tell my students or my players is, I'm here for you now, and I'll be here until I die. So you can always come to me and they do find me uh, from Freehold, Red Bank, Monmouth Regional, Asbury Park, Neptune. They do have a way of finding me. And so if you see me out there, and, and 25 of them uh, out of that group is police officers. Sometimes they come in their uniforms, sometimes they come just to talk in their regular day-to-day -day clothing. So if you happen to, the people that's concerned I want them to hear this and know that I'm not going to turn away for something that I love to do. If I can help you, you or you, I'm going to do it. So I, that's just, and I thank you for that. Listen. Jimenez, who runs the Tides for doing a remembrance ceremony Monday night, June 12th, which was the one year anniversary to the 49 victims of the Pulse nightclub shooting. So I'm sure I'm going to guess many of you know June's Pride Month, which is um, part of the reason some of these events are happening. Thank you. On June the 2nd, the 200 Club of Monmouth County had their annual Bauer Awards luncheon, and once again, Asbury Park police officers were given commendations. Uh, I would just like to read the names of the Asbury Park police officers who were given the commendation awards. Get, uh, Captain Guy Thompson, Sergeant Lorenzo Petaway, Sergeant Camille Walrick, Detective Darius Davis, Detective Gabe Casarico, Detective Steve Rasmer, Detective Cynthia Yost, Officer Frank Sanji, Officer Sh Shanice Wesley, Officer Greg Parisi, Officer Kevin Michael, Officer Michael McDonough, Special Officer James Crawford, <coughs> Special Officer <coughs> Anthony Ferentino, and Officer Carl Christie. And to be recognized by the 200 Club is a great accomplishment because that meant on September 13, 2016, they were instrumental in arresting people in a stabbing incident and they took two guns off the street. Uh, so again, our Asbury Park Police Department was once again recognized by the 200 Club. So I congratulate them, I thank them, and I thank all of our fine police and fire department. That's all I have. Managed by the city attorney? Or, I'm sorry, city manager? Um, as you know, every year,
can I ask you a question, Mike? Do we ever go out to the school system and uh, try to encourage the kids to come back to Asbury and if they go to college or maybe to get in law enforcement and come back? Yes, um, there's been recruitment practices in the past. I can ask uh, Kelso to give a better update of what happened, but I know police and fire have done a lot of recruitment. And we have the school resource officers in there for the positive law enforcement role models. But I'll get something in the next meeting, the meeting after, from both the fire chief and, and Deputy Chief Kelso about past recruitment. As you know, the civil service municipality really still is testing the procedure, still the score high. <coughs> previous thing about replacing police officers that's all fine I'm all for it and everything but something like that could we talk about it we have a personnel committee could we talk about that at the personnel committee meeting first instead of it just being oh by the way here's some news okay okay I mean I think that was the purpose of having a personnel committee okay thank you matters by city attorney Yes, just one matter. Um, yesterday was the advertised due date for a submission of proposals in response to the city's RFP, seeking vendors who are interested in operating a concession uh, regarding the rental of paddle boards and kayaks on the Deal Lake. We received two proposals, which are currently under review by the city manager, and we expect that um, a recommendation will be made for the possibility of an award at the next meeting, if possible. That's it. We'll roll into the uh, regular meeting. I'll do the roll call. Councilmember Chapman? Here. Councilmember Clayton? Yes. Councilmember Kendall? Present. Deputy Mayor Quinn? Here. Mayor Moore? Here. Can everybody please rise for a silent prayer moment of reflection, please? <coughs> Flag salute. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. As to comply with the Open Public Meetings Act, Chapter 231, Public Law 1975, adequate notice of this meeting has been provided in the following manner. The annual notice was forwarded to the Asbury Park Press, the Coaster, and the Stir Ledger, on January 3rd, 2017, and posted on bulletin board the same date. All notices are on file with the city clerk. This time, can I have a motion to open to the public portion of the council meeting, please? Move it. Second. Anybody who wishes to speak, please come up to the mic, state your name and address for the record, and each member has three minutes to speak. Uh, Robert Wiener, 601 Madison. Since my last appearance here, when I asked for Carter Sackman Czar, we have two more proposals that I missed. Uh, one was on Emory Street, which is directly around the corner from tonight's proposal. Tonight's proposal is east of the school, and if you ask anybody who works in the school or Purple Glaze Donuts, where are these people going to park? Uh, and every answer that you ask the uh, <coughs> Sackman group, they say, well, we're going to build a 600 a car parking lot. I don't know whether that's approved. Is it going to be a charge to everybody? Is it going to be free for everybody? Have we used up all 600 spaces already with all the projects? Every time I look around, if you look at that map, which I keep saying, it's Carter Sackman City. I mean, building, 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 no parking, no parking, no parking. So I just will come up here many times and say, are we looking at it? Are we looking at each project, not individually, but in total of what Carter Sackman is asking for? So if he's building that 600 park lot, I think he said it was going to take two years. Is it, is, are these going to be built before it, after it, during it? So it concerns me every time he comes up here with a new project. I, again, this is not anti-Carter Sackman. He's done a wonderful job for the town. But now I'm really concerned with the future. Thank you. Uh, and thank you. And part of the reason I asked him the question about the 607 property was 
that was a presentation he made a month or so ago with the green on the buildings and the supermarket, which it sounded like the supermarket's gone. And I was told by somebody that project was dead. So I don't know if it's dead. I don't know if it's alive. I didn't get an answer except if it is dead, I don't know why our financial people are looking into it. So I guess it's not dead. Is it, Michael? And every answer to his projects is, is they'll be parking in that 600 parking lot. Right, but well, should we ask him <coughs> if he's dead and stop our financial? Well, he's, he's paying for the financial advisor, so. Oh, he's, uh, okay. Yeah, we don't pay for that. That's oh, okay. Until he, so he tells us to stop doing something, <coughs> we're going to keep doing it. Okay, I apologize. Okay, if he's paying for it, but for some reason I thought somebody told me that project was dead. To your point, Robert, though, we, we absolutely are working on a map okay, with accumulation of development and parking. Michael and Michelle have been working on it, I think, for the last couple of weeks, and we're hoping to have a more comprehensive idea of what's going on downtown by the end of June. Thank you. Hello, my name's Nancy Kaplan. I live on Deal Lake Drive, 300 Deal Lake Drive, and I'm also <coughs> a member of the New Jersey State Council of the Humane Society of the United States and I'm here in support of the bill that's pending uh, relating to puppy mill dogs being sold in town and prohibiting stores from doing that. Um, there are 237 municipalities across the country, including cities, uh, that have banned the sale of puppy mill dogs in their borders, and studies have shown that towns that do this um, have marked reductions in shelter intakes and euthanization, so that's a positive, obviously, in terms of costs, um, and certainly from an animal welfare perspective, it's a positive. Um, also wanted to point out that there are a lot of um, consumer protection issues that have come up uh, relating to dogs that sell puppies, um, particularly in Monmouth County. We have two stores, one in Red Bank, one in Middletown, that have continued to buy dogs from suppliers that have numerous animal welfare um, violations. USDA has cited them for violations like filthy conditions, lack of veterinary care, um, keeping dogs in freezing conditions, and so forth. So I think the bottom line is we don't want to have stores in Asbury Park that would sell such animals. Um, we don't want to ban the idea of stores that sell shelter animals or give away shelter animals, but we really don't want to see any store come into this town um, that would sell puppies and the other thing I wanted to mention is that um, the, the Consumer Protection Bureau of the state is responsible for keeping track of the violations um, in the stores because the stores are supposed to post the origin of each animal and consumer protection information, as in the, the buyer's rights. And a lot of the stores are in violations. It costs us taxpayer money for the, for the state to be monitoring these stores. And I just think in terms of the values of Asbury Park, I personally don't want to have stores in town that are selling puppies from puppy mills where the mother and dog, mother and um, sire <coughs> dogs are sitting in cages, sometimes filthy cages, sometimes really suffering. We don't need that here. We don't have anybody here now, obviously, but I wouldn't want to see anybody moving in. So just wanted to speak on behalf of that. Any questions? No, thank you. And uh, so I guess we'll be the 238th city in America. I sure hope so. Well, we, we will be. Great. I have information if anybody wants it from Humane Society of the U.S. on, on this sort of this concept. I know it was probably emailed, but I have. Would you want me to give you papers? I think we're good. Okay. I think we're good. I brought handouts. No, yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. <coughs> and did you say you lived in Edgebury Park on Deal Lake Drive? I do. 300 Deal Lake Drive. Oh, wow. I used to live at 400 Deal Lake Drive. Uh, good evening. My name is Anita Weiner, Madison Avenue. I'd like to speak <laughs> about um, the building and the growth that's going on in Asbury in terms of height. I'm getting the impression that sunlight is going to be taken away because some of these projects seem to be want to be 12 stories high, 15 stories high, 13 stories high, and the downtown is beautifully open in terms of light and space. And the more that you allow buildings to go higher and higher uh, to match what other buildings are there, I just think we're going to get a really closed-in, dark, depressing 
feeling in town. So I just want you to be cognizant or aware of what you're allowing to be built and how high it's being allowed to be built. And I do, I am in favor of this complex being a new concept where there will be housing, parking, offices for the council and the city and the police and everything. And I would much rather see a parking lot here than any place else in the city, as long as you're not too high. Thank you. Thank you. Hi, Ed Baumgarten, 706 4th Avenue. Uh, it might be a little too late, I'm just wondering about this, but I, I'm here basically uh, in support of the council in terms of their trying to be proactive with the rental, the part-time and uh, temporary rentals that are going on. Uh, I think uh, being proactive to, towards that, especially in light of Airbnb, is a good thing. And Again, I am here in support of, uh, of the council. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> what, what, what are you doing tomorrow night at 7? Yeah, I know. <laughs> uh. <laughs> I'm on record. Yeah, <laughs> okay. You are. <laughs> That's funny. Thank you. Gary Maffei. I've lived on uh, Locust Drive for the past 15 years. I've owned a home there and I've recently moved to 601 Madison. Um, usually when I, when I speak, I like to have all my facts and figures. Um, however, in this instance, when I heard the Verizon wi free Wi-Fi proposal, it seemed to be fast-tracked. So I just wanted to have a couple of comments. When that's been <coughs> done in other jurisdictions, the free Wi-Fi is terrific. But when they put it on a street pole on a busy corner with a TV screen and a plug-in to juice up your phone, recharge your phone, mobs tend to form around them. And on Friday and Saturday night around 12, 1, 2, it, it might get very, very congested if, that, if that's what they're doing. I don't know. Yeah. Uh, they're not. No, it, it was on the where, the, where the fiber lines are on the pole. There's, there's no electric, no up at ground level, no mobs. It's all up. Yeah. Sure. It's, it's in the right place. In the airspace. Okay, great. So, thank you. Resolution 202, uh, authorizing the purchase of a four-wheel ATV. I'm sorry, could you speak up Louise, a little bit? Louise, you have to speak up. We can't hear you. Oh. Why? Hello. <laughs> <laughs> you can't hear me yet, still? A, a little bit better, but yeah. Okay. What happened? I. Okay. All right, I'll talk louder. There you <laughs> go. Yeah. Perfect. Um, the resolution 202 for the purchase of a four-wheel ATV for the police department. Michael, I think you said for the beach. Could you please el elaborate on that? I mean, why would they be going on the beach? For rescues, um, for criminal activity, we've had a couple instances. Um, we already have them on the beach, don't we currently? We have it for the lifeguards, yeah. not for the police. They don't well, have signs, they don't have, yes, for police, you need to have a special package. That's what the light package that the mayor just mentioned. Um, this is for Right. Um, <coughs> this is something that we feel we need now, and as we continue to grow, it will allow us for better patrolling of the beach and better safety. We've got four months of summer, <coughs> and I just think that, because I'm very pro-police, I think you could best use that money to make sure everybody's wearing a vest. I mean, that's my opinion, because how did we do it in the past? I mean, if somebody got hurt on the beach, they called in the fire department, are you called in what I, I just don't I don't know why that would be necessary to be operated on the beach is my point. That's all. Thank you. Tracy Rogers, uh, Springwood Avenue. Um, the Verizon, um, just a little bit more information. <coughs> the Obama administration actually worked on getting uh, free Wi-Fi in urban areas. So actually being on Springwood Avenue is a great plus. 
I asked the, I mean, uh, Interfaith, would they actually put Wi-Fi in a park? Because it would also help in programming, bringing people out to sit there, to do work, to have other activities. Now for it to be on Springwood uh, in an urban area, you know, it gives other people opportunities to find, you know, go on the internet, find uh, jobs, do other accesses. So I think it's a great plus. Uh, <coughs> we did a great job at the beach this, this weekend. I got a chance to spend most of the weekend down there, but it was, it was excellent. We made a lot of money and I'm enjoying it. Um, second, I'd like to ask, I submitted a letter to the council about the RCA program and the abandoned properties and I just wanted to follow up as to what the extent and how we can get this accomplished and what do we need to do. Also, I'm understanding with the RCA program, we have allocated units that are still out, that need to be out. Are we keeping a record and what is the actual record of those, of those properties? Actually, I mean, I have the records that actually show when the deposits were made. I got a report from the city as to, and I give you extensively how, that the city was obligated to 102 units. I got a report from uh, the city that says 47 were there. And that equates to the amount of money that's still available that says you actually still owe 53 units. I mean, everything matches up. So, I mean, <laughs> it's not even Edmonds coming in, but if you pull the records from the actual deposit dates and you keep a record of everything that transaction out of it, it still shows you have the money and the person doing the program says you have 47 units done. That's why we're so you're, miss so you're missing 53, but the, the math adds up. <laughs> you're missing No, 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 I'm just saying. That was, but that we're seeing the same things now as we went through this, which leads to other questions that we're auditing this now. I have the same issues and concerns you do. Is some things don't seem to be adding up. Um, Aries paperwork is phenomenal. But we're, we're triple checking this because there seems to be something amiss um, or remiss with the record keeping elsewhere. Especially on the well, uh, elsewhere, the actual, it shows that it's, it's there. It's not, it doesn't show the action. Not, not missing. I don't know who's saying you don't have any more obligation. I'm saying the paperwork shows you do have obligation. The money's there. The money has been shown by three different reports. And the actual cost analysis as to what you paid out, it goes, I have it all right here. It shows everything matches up. So you do have the obligation and the money to do it. And we can actually put this with the abandoned property and, and, and do these obligation okay I, I think part of the problem that I misunderstood for some reason I was led to believe all the obligations were filled and we had this two point whatever million dollars sitting there and that would have opened up to use the money for a pilot program to 
take and rehab houses and to start that. And then we were told at the last me meeting there could be obligations not filled, and that's why we have it to. It was discussed in closed session, so I'd be very careful about what you say at closed session because there might be legal issues with it. Okay. So I would stop talking. <laughs> <laughs> There was a miscommunication. There, there, there was a miscommunication. Okay, okay, Tracy, you're, you're, you're three minutes is up, and I'm trying to think how I'm going to reply to Michael. Except I should probably just shut up and then talk to him. Okay. 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 Thank you. Lori Roth, Long Branch Avenue, Long Branch. I'm here uh, as a visitor and a volunteer uh, in the city of Asbury Park, and I'm concerned about, uh, of course, the high crime rate, the violence, and in particular, the shooting. So I have a number of questions um, based on my concerns regarding my safety, the safety of the family, and certainly the safety of the children. In light of the articles that are in the Asbury Park Press, and as noted by esteemed Superior Court Judge Richard English, he called the west side of Asbury Park a war zone. He said between the guns and the heroin in Asbury Park, it's killing the west side of the city. It does have to stop. I have said this publicly. I have said this privately. I have a real concern for not just my life and my safety, but the safety of everyone in the city. So I'm kind of surprised that there was nothing really in the paper about the number of shootings. Now, because I'm a visitor and a volunteer in the impacted area, to my knowledge, I've been told <coughs> anecdotally, just with regards to the shootings, there have been five. Um, I know that the prosecutor's office is involved, and we've heard that the, they have been visiting the west side of town to try to combat that crime. But I want to know on the record, how many shootings have occurred in the city within the last 60 to 90 days? What steps has the city taken to improve public safety, particularly in the impacted <coughs> areas of the shooting? And why has the public not been notified of these shootings? And what safety initiatives, programs, and messaging has gone out to the people that live, work, worship, and visit here? There is a concern. Um, and again, it's wonderful that you're the coolest city. I happen to love the beach. I happen to, go, when I get an opportunity, I like to you know, spend my money in the downtown business district. There's a real concern about the shootings in the west side. And I don't know why the messaging is not going out to the public. So could somebody answer that? I don't, I cannot give you the information today as far as how many shootings will be looked into and you'll be given the information in a reasonable time frame. I'm okay. not going to say 48 hours because I, I, I don't know how you retrieve this. Uh, now, what has been done in terms of the messaging, Mayor, and any public safety, any tips, any helpful tips? Okay. The only thing, I think I was not paying attention when you began with the Judge English his comments in the Asbury Park press. His press. comments were going back to the shootings from 2013. But I, his I can tell you. His comments were not addressing 2017. Our crime rate has dropped dramatically from 2013 to 2017. Are we good? Yes. Are we perfect? Absolutely not. But don't, don't his comments were about the it's shooting. It's the past. Is what it you're saying. It's not present day, so everything is fine. No, no. There's no, no heroin epidemic taking, in the city. I'm, I'm saying you're taking Judge English's comments from a trial going on in Freehold now, going back to 2013, where people are being investigated and being charged with and admitting back then it was the Wild West. But, Mayor, you had a young girl, 15 years old, that was shot on June 1st of this year. I said so. it's better. I didn't say it's perfect. I said we're trying to make it perfect. And I don't know any place, be it Rumson, Deal, be it Allenhurst, where crime is perfect in any community. And I'm it's, just it's asking it's for help and uh, what we can do to we notify will get the public. You the numbers as soon as possible. Okay. Next week. We'll Thank get, you, ma'am. Okay. Thank you. Not that this makes a difference, but I think it's Judge Oxley, not Judge English. No, it's English. Oh, is it English? Yeah, okay. English. That's what the paper said. 
Okay, oh, uh, then I could be wrong. It was in today's paper. You know, it's been on the Asbury Park Press every every day for the last week. Yeah, it has to do with the board yeah. park police yeah. officers. Hi, Rita Moreno, 8th Avenue. Well, on my way here tonight, I uh, saw the for sale sign that I talked about two weeks ago. It's as big as a car. It's on Asbury and Maine. And the dumpster's still there. Uh, that's two things. And the other thing you was know, I called today to city manager for the beach report and the parking report for the week. And also, I, I have a, a problem with the police department that don't know the ordinances. We had cars parked on our street, trucks, huge ones. One was parked party line. That truck was so big that it knocked the tree over on Grand Avenue. But the cop wouldn't put a ticket on it. He said it was legal and that he was doing business in town late at night. They don't even know that commercial vehicles can't park in the residential neighborhood after dark or overnight. And I had an incident next door to me. The van was from Allen Hurst. He had a pickup truck with a lift, and he had another car on the lift for three days. Called the police. Well, once I called the ship commander, he told me to call 911. I said, why would I call 911? But that was the emergency number. He said, that's who you have to call. Okay, so I called, and I did what I had to do. Finally, I found out that the vehicle on my street was from Allenhurst, and I was fuming. I called the Allenhurst police. They said, well, that vehicle is not allowed on our streets. I said, well, they're also not allowed on our streets. <coughs> so, I mean, let the police drive around with an ordinance book so they know. They're young, and they're new, and they don't listen to the old timers because they think they know everything. But I mean, everybody knows you can't have a commercial vehicle on the street at night, overnight. There's one right now on Grand Avenue with ladders on top of it between 7th and 8th. That'll be there all night. Nobody will touch it. They park in the yellow zone. Nobody gives them a ticket. I was in Bradley Beach. I was a foot into the yellow zone, and I almost got a ticket the other day. They had, you know, not even a foot. It was a couple of inches. And he said, no, no. you." Yeah, I'm glad you're here because he was going to give me a ticket for just being there. So why can't they be more alert? I mean, like, how come we have to be alert and see these big signs and see the dumpsters? I mean, something has to be done. And the other thing about hiring 15, you, I, uh, Michael, did you say 15 police officers are retiring? In the next three years, that's, that's how many are eligible to retire, and you could see 10 each. So? Why don't you hire part-time? This way you don't have to pay benefits instead of spending $6 million on that health plan every year. That's how much it is, $6 million. One benefit. I mean, you've got to start thinking fiscal. You can't keep buying and, and paying out all these huge amounts of money. I mean, maybe if you got real fiscal, then you could be social. But first, you've got to be fiscal. South Beach Revenue, parking revenue. Uh, the four sign in the dumpsters. I'm sorry, the sun's right yeah. in my face. Okay. Um, the four the four sale sign in the dumpsters. We issued corrective action notices. <coughs> and they didn't comply, obviously, as you're sitting here complaining about it. And we've been issuing them summonses. And I spoke to Code this morning about it because I saw it, the mayor saw it, you've seen it. They haven't done anything, so they're getting summons. Um, the beach and parking, that's a monthly report that comes out from the department heads. So we'll have that in early July. Um, we don't do weekly reports with it. The police issue for the truck, yep, the police department screwed that up. Um, the tech, uh, Deputy Chief Kelso came and saw me on Monday, said that you would talk to him. And he said, yep, the officer was wrong, that the car should have been ticketed. And you know, he, he said he apologized and yeah, we're, we screwed that one up. Yeah, he was very nice. Um, the truck issue, I didn't quite follow you, so after the meeting, stop by and see me, and I, that was it. I can't see anything. They, got, they knocked down a young tree on, on Grand Avenue. I'll get the police report. I'll talk to, to Kelso about it, because I, this is the first I'm hearing about it, but I'll talk to Kelso and see about the tree. Okay. And the other thing is, I agree with Louise about the truck. I don't think you need that truck. Okay, thank you, Rita. And Rita, 
when something happens, like you said, about the truck from Allenhurst and everything, yeah. if you call that day, it helps us. It, I don't know if that's the one where you called the shift operator. Well, Friday, Saturday, and Sunday. Okay. Then do me a favor. Don't wait until Wednesday to come to a council meeting. Call Michael or call, you can call me and I'll call Michael on Monday because we can ask the police department to go back and play the tapes and see okay. what was done wrong and how we can correct it. Obviously something was done wrong and the quicker we get to it, and <coughs> you're, you're right, mistakes are made and the quicker we, we find out about them, the quicker we can correct them. But, but it, it, and I appreciate that, but it's a quicker, like we can get the information. I can shoot Michael an email. Believe me, he responds to me and I'm sure to the rest of the council seven days a week, 24 hours a day. And I do sleep. Uh, well, sometimes, but <laughs> I, I have no problem trying to wake him up if it's something important. But the quicker he gets it, the quicker he can ask Deputy Chief Kelso to get him the information so we can correct it, so it doesn't go on for three days. Okay. And, and thank you, and I agree with you. <laughs> Just call John Rita. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, hey, Rita calls me. I, I, I love talking to Rita. She, no, she, she, she yeah, but Vera loves talking to uh, Rita also. Jerry. Hello, Council and, and Mayor. Jerry Scran, a long way. Um, listen, I had to hear about that truck and trailer every day. <laughs> and she was going to call you, and she didn't want to call you. She kept thinking, should I? And I said, no, because we thought the police department would handle it. Okay, Michael, thanks for going over those ordinances that we uh, are coming up. That was really good. Um, oh, by the way, got. Guy, you did a fantastic job with the Memorial, Memorial Day services, moving it inside. But maybe we could have a public announcement because more people told us they would have went if they knew it was inside. They didn't know, they kind of thought it got canceled. I said, why would they cancel that? But they didn't know it was in the armory and then inside the church. So that could be announced. Um, last night I had the pleasure to come to a, the zoning board meeting and the guy doing a, a renovation or a new building on 508th Avenue did the presentation. It was the best presentation I ever saw in this room. All presentations should be done to that caliber, and this is just one house. We have people doing $10 million jobs that don't put the effort that that guy did on a $500,000 renovation. You really need to see that presentation. Um, he did 3D dimension drawing that you don't need a model. They were perfect scale. I just wanted you to see that. Um, there's something wrong in the beachfront. People walk crossing the street, don't even stop at the curb. They walk right in the street expecting a car to stop short for them. Someone should be giving tickets to pedestrians that don't have enough common sense to stop before they do cross the crosswalk. I mean, it's defensive driving down there. Um, what's the latest? I'd like to know the latest outcome for the Holy Spirit condos. Are we going to make money on the deal? I would like to know about that. Um, when's Convention Hall going to be restore, restored? I'd like to have that answer or talk about that. Um, when you're given a date, like when you say the date, um, 620, or, uh, by the way, thank you for the Budget Committee, whoever was pushing that along, thank you. Say the day, because most people think by day, oh, I have a meeting next Wednesday. Like, I don't know the date for next Wednesday or next Monday, but I do know Wednesday or Thursday when I'm doing something. So if you could say that, that'd be helpful. Oh, could you add this to the master plan since you're working on it? I like to see a timeline so we know what's going on because everything, prices are hot, real estate's hot in Asbury Park, but if the building site between 3rd and 4th, Kingsley and Ocean stumbles, there's a lot of people who are gonna be sore losers about paying high prices for houses. Houses are going on the market and they're getting multiple offers in the first couple of days. It all depends on that one building. We need a timeline to say when it's gonna be done. So when people talk real estate, this building is expected to be done in two years or whatever, we need something like that to help people. And then um, 
listen, I, I gotta be careful how I say this because I don't want to get phone calls. We need fashion police. There's no reason for people to be walking on Kingsley and Heck Street in bikini. <coughs> you don't see that even in South Beach, three blocks from the ocean, people wearing underwear on the street. There, I don't know how you're gonna fix broken, but there's something wrong. I haven't seen Speedos, because I would have looked, but I haven't seen them. But I do see bikini and string top. Something's wrong, and I don't know how you're going to fix it. Uh, and then other people were telling well, Rita. I'm going to say your three minutes are up. Oh, no, but one more thing. Um, Michelle McGuire was telling Rita on 8th Avenue. She witnessed people empty out the strollers and put the garbage in the gutter in front of her house. <coughs> And good thing she caught him. He picked it up and apologized and put it in a garbage can. There has to be people walking around saying, oh, you did that? Here's a nice ticket, $50. Thank you for coming to Asbury Park. OK, so could you answer some of my questions about the Holy Spirit? <laughs> a couple of them. And the, uh, and the convention hall? Ve Veterans Day. That's you know, the Memorial one. Day. Memorial Day. Memorial Day. Memorial Day. That, that was an iffy day, should it be, should it be, and the one is run by the fire department, so it is a city event. The other one is more by uh, Harold Daily Post 1333, and both locations, the uh, officer was stationed there to tell anybody who showed up that they were moved inside. So we did think about that, and Kevin took care of the You did a great job. Yeah, uh, firemen's, and Frank made sure somebody was at the VF, uh, the park, Memorial Park to tell people that it's been moved inside. So we did try to do that. Convention Hall, they're working on it. But uh, is there a deadline, timetable? No. There is no, no, in the 2002 agreement, there is no deadline, no timetable, no bonds, no anything for 30 years. So they're working on it. Uh, as far as, I think you're referring to the 1101 project, the hotel. Well, we used to call it the Esperanza, but I don't know what they're going to call well, it now. We're going to call it 1101, and there was a pre-construction meeting today where towards the end of the month, they're going to be moving in a gigantic crane to start the work. Okay. So work is proceeding there. Uh, <coughs> and it's going to be a two to three day to put this crane in <coughs> place. It takes three s big cranes to put this gigantic crane in place. So well, size is important. Okay. <laughs> and <laughs> that's all the answers I have for you. <laughs> because what I forget the rest of your questions. Well, I can jump in with regard okay, to yeah. the... Um, well, well what about the walking? Uh, people not stopping on the sidewalk right off into the street down at the beachfront. They don't even stop. Okay. <laughs> with regard, Jerry, to the Holy Spirit Church, which is the uh, 1003 Bond Street easement request, that matter is still under review by the council. If and when a, a determination is made, uh, there will be a, an ordinance and it'll be a, a public matter that'll be on the agenda in future. But right okay. now it's still under review. Okay, thank you for listening to me, I appreciate it. Thank you, Jared. Hi, I'm Ernest Mignoli, 400 Deal Lake Drive, Asbury Park. I'm wondering if I become a realtor in Long Branch, if I'll get extra time. <laughs> Move. Don't waste it now. Don't I know you, don't, I know you're don't waste it wondering. Fastidious with my time, but I notice. Don't don't waste it wondering. If I become a Long Branch realtor and I come here, give me an extra three, four, five minutes. It wasn't three or four. No, or five. I, I I'm well aware of my time. Okay, Ernest. Trust me, I'm trying to make a larger point here. Okay. Okay. I look, I'm within my time. You're wasting your time. So. I'm not wasting my time. Okay. Sometimes silence is more important. Okay. I made a very cogent point there. I like to know why some people from out of town seem to get a lot more time, a lot more congeniality, and a lot more concern when I'm living in the Santander, a building where we can't control our fire system. The management company is operating out of a potentially illegal home in in uh, in Asbury, uh, staffed by two owners. One is on the planning board. One's on the zoning board. I have to be the one to find out that they don't have proper permits. Memorial Day weekend, we have fire alarms and then things going off and no management and no response. And uh, 
if you read about the London fires today, uh, unfortunately, the alarm systems didn't work well because construction, very similar to Santander, a lot of breakdowns. Uh, and of course, confusion amongst the people living there. They're told to stay in their unit uh, by mistake. And we all, we all know what happened. Uh, we've had a fire alarm because the supers failed to turn the boiler off. It set the fire alarm off. And then the supers were seen telling people stay in their apartments. So we're all in danger. I have people calling me, my neighbors, saying they had to go to the hospital on Memorial Day weekend. They weren't getting any response from management. Five days later, we got a response from the most prolific management company in Asbury, Houndsman's. They responded five days later saying that, relax, don't worry, everything's under control. So in my 42 seconds left, I'd like to point out the fact that I find it interesting that uh, a city manager, when questioned about major projects, and can, can say, I don't know if it's alive or dead. Uh, I also think it's interesting that we have a city manager from a small town who's a experience there, but yet to come to a large city like this and to actually run the police department concerns me. I, I don't know what city manager Capabianco's acumen is to run a police department as troubled as Asbury. And in the last seven seconds, the statistics about Asbury Park have not gotten better. They're actually <laughs> tragic in terms of violence and murders and crime by FBI statistics. Ernest, if, if you want to use another 15 seconds. No, no, no. I'm, I, I just wanted to say my piece. I don't really. Hello, thank everyone. You. I want to thank for the rapid response of our First Avenue. Thank your, you very your much. Your name and address, please. Oh, oh sorry. 405 First Avenue. Uh, Calvin Anderson. Um, I, I, I walked in, you were talking about the um, police jobs. The um, I was wondering, I heard a little bit of it, if you would consider um, running like a cadet program out of the high school so that the kids at the high school can get a chance to become police officers and to encourage them to, um, you know, get into law enforcement. You know, um, connect with the school board and um, you know make some things happen for those kids that live here in the community. Um, I also want to talk about the Damonte uh, on First Avenue. We have a lot of drug activity coming out of there, and um, the fire department is called there all the time. Are they being charged for when the fire department comes? You know, I think it's 120 times that they showed up there. I might be a little bit off, but um, anytime that the school pulls an alarm, they have to pay and go to court and pay for it. So I want to make sure that they're paying also when all these false alarms are taking place. But thank you for the rapid response for First Avenue. I really appreciate that. Okay, thank right, you. Thank you. Yeah. Uh, the police department does run a cadet program, correct? correct? Police yes. Yes, they still do. So let us find out. I forget which officers. I want to say Officer McAllister, but I'm not positive. Yeah. Well, like a part of job training plan. I think it would be good. Okay. Well, we'll see if we can expand it. And uh, as far as the Del Monte, I'm going to say a couple of weeks ago, we got a complaint about it in both all all departments, uh, fire code. Everybody was down there doing a thorough investigation as far as making sure everything was being done properly. So we are aware of the, some of the problems there they are being looked at. And with the Del Monte, the state kicked us out. The state has jurisdiction over the inspection. We told our code enforcement department to leave. We didn't, but they told us to leave. And so when they say the fire department, they're paying for you know, the fire department. They are, I see that there's a report that gets sent up to me. So it tracks everyone who's had it. So if they, they're over the number, they get some. And the number's three, so they're over the number. <laughs> yes, sir. My name is Richard McLaughlin, and I'm not a local. I'm just part-time here. I have a house on 1407 Bond Street. And I got sent here by my wife to peel me away from the television, I guess. So <laughs> here I am speaking. I can't believe it. But anyway, 
Uh, particularly, she loves that bridge that we're right by sunset there. That's unbelievable. If you walked across it since it's finished, it's beautiful. And uh, just sit out there on those benches, and then the swans go by. So my wife loves the swan. She also loves history besides nature. So she thinks swans are a big part of the history of Asbury Park. And they are impressive. They're really beautiful. So uh, in fact, a couple summers ago, there was there were some black swans on the lake. I don't know if you ever saw them, but I think there's a doctor up there around some exotic Australian swans. And it was like 100 degrees. And there was a lot of debris at the end of the lake there. And there was a dead swan in the middle of it. And it was feathered. It was awful. My wife said, you get in there and get it. We're not going to, that's not the right thing. So I had to go and I get some tools. And I finally fished it out and buried it on the front lawn. That made her happy anyway. So why am I telling you this? That's a <laughs> <laughs> so OK, <coughs> part of the history of uh, uh, these swans are part of the history. And another thing. And especially after what uh, Councilman Kendall talked about, the walking club, um, I'm, it's getting a little tougher to get around these days. But I like to go fishing. And there used to be a, a fishing club, apparently, in Asbury. And if you go into Frank's Deli or a lot of other places, you see the swans, you see the fishing club. And uh, I was just wondering if there's any consideration or any thought of putting something together, public, private thing, or fishing club that, to get involved, or I've got an idea or two that could make it very inexpensive. Just just a thought, that's all. I'd love to see that, because I just don't like to walk out on those jetties anymore or across the view. I like to find a nice, quiet place to go fishing. OK. Uh, oh, OK, so the, the black swans and the lake being fetid. How about an aerator at that end of the town to clean that end of the uh, pond up? It really gets pretty. Last summer, it was really pretty bad. You could almost walk on it. I don't know what it's going to be like this year, and I really appreciate that bridge. It's beautiful. You really enhance that park. Overly, you do a great job. We just love this town. Huh? $1 million. 90% paid for by Sandy. Just, I'm just saying, when you say it's a million dollars, let's be clear, 90% of it was paid for by Sandy. Let's not take up the gentleman's time. Yeah. Go ahead, sir. That's, that's terrific that you uh, were able to do that, and with some public money. That's fantastic. That'll add a lot. Add a lot, adds a lot to the town. And so um, so how about a fishing club for us guys that have a hard time getting around but like to fish is one idea. I, I, if I could volunteer or help in any way, I'd love to. By the way, I'm from Bergen County, so but I'm down here fairly often. And, and um, that's, a, that's about it. Those are just a few of the points I wanted to make. I understand there's a community garden around here somewhere. Right, right back here, right I'd like door. to see that. Uh, we do like nature and things like that. And uh, um, I think you guys do a great job. I really appreciate it. Love this town. Thank you. Thank you, and uh, thank your wife for throwing you out of the house tonight. <laughs> uh, there is an Asbury Park Fishing Club. It's the oldest saltwater fishing club in the nation. It goes back to 1902. I, after the meeting, I'll give you the president's name of it. They meet monthly. They're mostly ocean fishing. Yes. But they do sponsor tournaments in Deal Lake, and they've sponsored fishing tournaments through uh, with Debbie Delissa. So I'll give you that information. And I, I, did, I, go, I did go on. She also said you guys went fishing. So, but you don't so have to join to go fishing. All you, all you better do if you go fishing in that lake is get a license because I know people have gotten tickets because it's not from Asbury Park, but the game wardens drive around looking just to give out tickets if you're fishing in Deal Lake, Wesley Lake, or Sunset Lake. It's a lot of nature down here. It's really beautiful. Yes, and we're hoping the lake, because Eileen's taking charge of a commission to make that lake as pretty as possible and we don't go through what we went through. Can they stop fishing so forth? So it's we're a little bit shallow. We're in trying there. to kill the algae before we put more fish in there. Two years ago, we bought white perch, and we had to get the DEP permit to put them in there to eat the algae. And I think somebody caught all the white perch because the algae kept on growing. Really? Yeah, so. But there are fish in there, and I appreciate it's everything. It's a cousin of the striped bass, by the way, which is way back yesterday. Is it? Yeah. Okay. Well, again, Joey Pilato is the president of the fishing club, and I will give you 
number if you'd like to get in touch with us. And no, just, just you. so you know, Sunset Lake was treated for algae. It's gotten an algae treatment, and there'll be two additional algae treatments in there. It's a little bit too shallow on the western end for an aerator right now. And um, we're working with the Urban Coast Institute at Monmouth University and with the Monmouth County Health Department to clean and maintain that lake. And actually, uh, we just spoke with the Audubon Society about perhaps creating some wildlife refuges on those little islands. And are you guys going with the swans so far? I understand they came over and produced, but, but uh, I mean, it's beautiful, right? So far, so far, so good. <laughs> and we'll see at the grand opening on the 20th? Friday at four. Is the grand opening, I mean, we're all, the bridge is open, but we're doing like a little grand opening of the- of A the ribbon cut. Next Friday at four o'clock. Next Friday at four o'clock? Mm -hmm. Come to the bridge. Is it next Friday or this Friday? Next, next Friday, Friday next four o'clock. On the Fifth Avenue side of the bridge. Thank you. Motion to close. Move it. Second. Second. We'll move on to minutes. We have three sets of minutes this evening. We have executive session minutes of May 24th. We have workshop minutes of May 24th. And we have regular meeting minutes of May 24th. Do I have a motion to approve the minutes? Move, move it. it. Second. <coughs> Councilmember Chapman. Yes. Councilmember Clayton. Yes. Councilmember Kendall? Yes. Deputy Mayor Quinn? Yes. Mayor Moore? Yes. We'll move on to the consent agenda. Resolution 2017-186, resolution approving special event applications. 2017-187, resolution of the City of Asbury Park make an application to New Jersey Local Finance Board pursuant to NJSA 48-3-1 at SEC and previous approvals of said board. 2017-188, resolution approving disposition of surplus property. Resolution 2017-189, resolution requesting permission for the dedication of rider for revenues derived from donations required by NJSA 48, 5-29. 2017-190, endorsing the submissions of the 2016 recycling tonnage grant application. Resolution 2017-192, resolution of the City of Asbury Park releasing performance bond for 204-209 Bond Street and accepting maintenance guarantee. 2017-194, resolution approving disposition of surplus property with no value. And resolution 2017-195, rejecting request for proposals for the Turf Club soil removal project. Does anybody wish any of those resolutions to be removed off the consent agenda? Hearing none, can I have a motion to approve consent agenda, please? Move it. Second. Councilmember Chapman? Yes. Councilmember Clayton? Yes. Councilmember Kendall? Yes. Deputy Mayor Quinn? Yes. Mayor Moore? Yes. Resolution 2017 196, resolution amending temporary budget appropriations for 2017 budget. Can I have a motion, please? Move it. Second. Any comments or questions? Councilmember Chapman? Yes. Councilmember Clayton? Yes. Councilmember Kendall? Yes. Deputy Mayor Quinn? Yes. Mayor Moore? Yes. Resolution 2017-197, resolution approving the payment of bills. Councilmember Chapman abstains from purchase order 17-01569. Can I have a motion to approve, please? Move it. Second. Any comments or questions? Councilmember Chapman? Yes. Councilmember Clayton? Yes. Councilmember Kendall? Yes. Deputy Mayor Quinn? Yes. Mayor Moore? Yes. Resolution 2017-198, resolution approving 2017-2018 liquor license renewal, renewals. Can I have a motion, please? Move it. Second. Any comments or questions? The open public comment period is now closed. Yeah, I know the closed comment is closed. It is. I mean, it's, it's, it is open. And now I understand a little bit more as to venue. Councilmember Chapman? Yes. Councilmember Clayton? Yes. Councilmember Kendall? Yes. Deputy Mayor Quinn? Yes. Mayor Moore? Yes. Resolution 2017-199. Resolution establishing a mayor's wellness committee in and of the city of Asbury Park. The following people are uh, listed on the resolution for approval tonight. Mayor John Moore for, and all the terms expire 1231-17. Mayor John Moore, the city manager or his designee, Lisa Lee, Wendy Glassman, 
Jesse Ricks, Allison Serco, Dr. Leslie Castellini, and Lena Sequi. Can I have a motion to approve, please? Move it. Second. Are there any comments or questions? Councilmember Chapman? Yes. Councilmember Clayton? Yes. Councilmember Kendall? Yes. Deputy Mayor Quinn? Yes. Mayor Moore? Yes. Resolution 2017-200, resolution of appointing housing authority, appointment to the housing authority. The following member is being reappointed, Carol Torrey, expiration date April 27, 2022. Have a motion please? Move it. Have a second? Second. Comments or questions? Councilmember Chapman? Yes. Councilmember Clayton? No. Councilmember Ke uh, Kendall? Question first. Who are the people again? Carol, Carol, Carol Torres. Torres. Carol Torres. We're reappointing her. She's already been appointed. Yes. Yes. Uh, <laughs> yes. <laughs> Councilmember Quinn and Mayor Moore. Yes. Resolution 2017-201. Resolution terminating contract with Municap. Have a motion, please. Move Moving. it. Second. Third. <laughs> yeah. Comments or questions? Councilmember Chapman? Yes. Councilmember Clayton? Yes. Councilmember Kendall? Yes. Deputy Mayor Quinn? Yes. Mayor Moore? Yes. Resolution 2017-202, resolution authorizing the purchase of a four-wheel ATV from a police department. Can I have a motion, please? Move it. Second. Comments or questions? Councilmember Chapman? Yes. Councilmember Clayton? Yes. Councilmember Kendall? Yes. Deputy Mayor Quinn? Yes. Mayor Moore? Yes. Resolution 2017-203, resolution authorizing an agreement for financial and administrative services. Have a motion, please. Move it. Second. Comments or questions? Councilmember Chapman? Yes. Councilmember Clayton? Yes. Councilmember Kendall? Yes. Deputy Mayor Quinn? Yes. Mayor Moore? Yes. Resolution 2017-204, authorizing design services, project management, and construction and inspection services to T&M Associates for improvements to sanitary sewer line under Heck Street. Can I have a motion, please? Move it. Second. Comments or questions? Comment. Michael, we're going to notify um, the people prior to the work, both putting signs up and in their mailbox. Uh, not in the mailbox. They'll get it in their door. Okay. Yeah. Yeah, that's okay. Okay. Any more comments? Councilmember Chapman? Yes. Councilmember Clayton? Yes. Councilmember Kendall? Yes. Deputy Mayor Quinn? Yes. Mayor Moore? Yes. Resolution 2017-205, authorizing professional services contract to T&M Associates to prepare the municipal public access plan for the city of Asbury Park. Have a motion, please. Move it. Second. Any comments or questions? Councilmember Chapman? Yes. Councilmember Clayton? Yes. Councilmember Kendall? Yes. Deputy Mayor Quinn? Yes. Mayor Moore? Yes. Resolution 2017-206, authorizing the execution of a right-of-way use agreement between the City of Asbury Park and Verizon. Can I have a motion, please? Move it. Second. Second. Comments or questions? Councilmember Chapman? Yes. Councilmember Clayton? Yes. Councilmember Kendall? Yes. Deputy Mayor Quinn? Yes. Mayor Moore? Yes. We're on to ordinances, introduction, 2017-25, an ordinance amending and supplementing section 4-1, business licenses by adding subsection 4-1.10, sale of animals, and chapter four, general licensing of the code of the city of Asbury Park, New Jersey. Can I have a motion to introduce this ordinance, please? Move it. Second. Councilmember Chapman? Yes. Councilmember Clayton? Yes. Councilmember Kendall? Yes. Deputy Mayor Quinn? Yes. Mayor Moore? Yes. Public hearing for this ordinance will be held on June 28, 2017. Ordinance 2017 26, Ordinance of the City of Asbury Park amending traffic and parking regulations, Chapter 7, Sections 11 and 16. Can I have a motion to introduce this ordinance, please? 
Move it. Second. Council Member Chapman? Yes. Council Member Clayton? Yes. Council Member Kendall? Yes. Deputy Mayor Quinn? Yes. Mayor Moore? Yes. Public hearing for this ordinance will be held on June 28, 2017. Ordinance 2017-27. Vacating an unnamed alleyway measuring 15 feet wide located east of Dunleavy Street in block 1801 and shown on sheet 18 of the official tax map of the city of Asbury Park. Can I have a motion to introduce this ordinance, please? Move it. Second. Council Member Chapman? Yes. Council Member Clayton? Yes. Council Member Kendall? Yes. Deputy Mayor Quinn? Yes. Mayor Moore? Yes. Public hearing for this ordinance will be held on June 28, 2017. <laughs> Ordinance 2017-28, bond ordinance providing for various parking utility improvements by and in the city of Asbury Park in the county of Monmouth, state of New Jersey appropriating 1,500,000, therefore an authorizing issuance of 1,500,000 in bonds or notes to finance a car cost, per cost thereof. Have a motion, please. Move it. Second. Council Member Chapman. Yes. Council Member Clayton. Yes. Council Member Kendall? Yes. Deputy Mayor Quinn? Yes. Mayor Moore? Yes. Public hearing for this ordinance will be held on July 12, 2017. Ordinance 2017-29, bond ordinance providing for various sewer utility improvements by and in the city of Asbury Park, in the county of Mom, the state of New Jersey, appropriating 500000 therefore and authorizing the issuance of 500000 in bonds and notes to finance the cost of a part thereof. Can I have a motion, please? Move it. Second. <laughs> <laughs> Council Member Chapman? Yes. Council Member Clayton? Yes. Council Member Kendall? Yes. Deputy Mayor Quinn? Yes. Mayor Moore? Yes. Public hearing is scheduled for this ordinance for July 20, I'm sorry, July 12, 2017. Ordinance 2017-30. Bond ordinance providing for various roadway improvements by and in the city of Asbury Park in the county of Monmouth, state of New Jersey appropriating $1,650,000, therefore, including a grant expected to be received by the New Jersey Department of Transportation in the amount of $297,108, and authorizing the issuance of $1,650,000 bonds or notes in the city as the financial cost of the part thereof. Have a motion, please? Move it. Second. Council Member Chapman? Yes. Council Member Clayton? Yes. Council Member Kendall? Yes. Deputy Mayor Quinn? Yes. Mayor Moore? Yes. Public hearing on this ordinance will be held on July 12, 2017. We're on second reading public hearing, Ordinance 2017-22, Bond Ordinance Amending and Supplementing Bond Ordinance Number 2910, which provides for sanitary and storm sewer improvements, herefore finally adopted by the City Council, the City of Asbury Park, and Co County of Monmouth, State of New Jersey, on June 3rd, 2009, to amend description set forth therein. Have a motion to open this ordinance up to the public, please. Move, Move it. Second. Anybody like to be heard? 22. 20. The first one. It's the bond, it's the bond <laughs> ordinance. <laughs> Nothing. <coughs> It, 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 there's no change in money. It doesn't cost the city a penny. <laughs> it, do, it does not cost the city a penny. Expands <clears throat> the original document passed 
limited to Springwood Avenue. If we have extra money, this expands it to the entire city, so we don't have to come back and say, can we use it on Heck Street? It's already done. Motion to close. Move it. Second. Motion to adopt ordinance 2017-22. Move it. Second. <coughs> Council Member Chapman. Yes. Council Member Clayton. Yes. Council Member Kendall. Yes. Deputy Mayor Quinn. Yes. Mayor Moore. Yes. Next is Ordinance 2017-24, an ordinance of the City of Asbury Park amending and traffic parking re regulations, Chapter 7, Section 20. I believe the Council's denial, uh, desire is to uh, defeat this ordinance. So motion to move. To defeat the ordinance. Well, it depends, depends on both. We have to move it and then vote no, right? Yeah, yeah. Right. so move it forward okay. and second, and then everybody can vote no if that's right. Move it. Second. Second. Council Member Chapman. No. Council Member Clayton. No. Council no. Member Kendall. Wait a minute. Yes. You're voting no. Okay, right. 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 Council Member Kendall? No. Deputy Mayor Quinn? No. Mayor Moore? No. To defeat. To Rita. defeat. The ordinance was defeated. It's going to be revised substantially and reintroduced at the next council meeting. Yes, Correct. Motion to adjourn. Move it. Second. All in favor. Yay.